frogs especially they have small pores on their skin through which the exchange of gases can take place this is the only amphibian that is there which is called as wingless amphibia because they do not have limbs so that is the four limbs not the hind limb so they are wingless parasites are those organisms which live on other living host and derive nutrition from those living host right Hello everyone, a warm welcome to the session on First PUC Biology. I'm Dr. Divya, Biology Faculty, Vidyashram Pre University College, Temple of Excellence, Mysore. So, in this session, let us learn about the topic Class Amphibia under Subphylum Vertebrata under Chapter 4, that is Animal Kingdom. So, let's learn about the characteristics of amphibians and then learn some of the MCQs under this particular topic. So, Class Amphibia. So, this name means dwell life, wherein amphi means dwell and bios meaning life. So, here these organisms, they have two lives wherein one half they spend in the water and the remaining on land. That is, during the time of mating and to lay eggs for reproduction, they move to the water. Otherwise, they spend their time on the land. So, that is why they are called as amphibians meaning dwell life. They live in aquatic as well as terrestrial habitats and these animals are also cold-blooded animals wherein they are not capable of regulating the body temperature and their body temperature tends to vary according to their external temperature. And they have two pairs of limbs that is a pair of forelimb and a pair of hind limb and it is the hind limb that they use for hopping. They have a head, the body is divided into head and trunk and in some the body is divided into head, trunk and tail. For example, salamanders under amphibians, they have a tail. Frogs do not have a tail, they have only, the body is divided only into a head and a trunk. Whereas in the case of salamander, it is divided into head, trunk and tail. And as I told you, tail is present in some and the skin is without any scales, they lack scales. But the skin is moist and this moist skin sometimes help these organisms to respire as well. And they have eyes which have eyelids. So it is from these organisms that is from the class amphibia the organisms will have an eyelid. And they do not have exactly a ear like how we have with pinnacle and all that. But they have tympanum which is an external opening that represents their ear. So if you can see here, they have a small external opening that is there in this region, which is called as tympanum. That actually helps them to hear. And you can see their body is somewhat slimy and it is gelatinous. That is why, because they have moist skin. Moist skin. And they have two forelimbs. That is one, a pair of forelimb and a pair of hind limb, and their feet are webbed so that they can wade in the water properly. So next talking about their elementary kennel. So they have a chamber which is called as cloaca. So it is into this cloaca that the elementary kennel, the urinary and the reproductive tracts open into one common chamber called cloaca and that cloaca opens to the exterior through which the excretory product or the waste product comes out. So if you can see here talking about the elementary canal, the elementary canal has esophagal and the liver, then the stomach, the gallbladder, all that comes under the elementary canal. So the intestine, so if you can see these elementary canal, all of these will are interconnected to one another and they open into one common chamber that is the cloaca. So this portion is the cloaca. So it opens into the cloaca and if we can see the urinary tract that is the ureter, the urinary bladder that is the reproductive tract is ureter. Talking about the urinary bladder and the kidney both opens into cloaca only if you can see here. So this urinary bladder also opens into cloaca. The kidney also opens into the cloaca, it both opens into the cloaca and then talking about the ureter that is uh, the 
tube that connects the kidney with that of the cloaca. So it connects the kidney opens into the cloaca through the ureter. So they have this reproductive tract. So that reproductive tract also opens into the cloaca only and that cloaca opens to the outside wherein it will have a cloacal aperture and through that the waste products come out. So therefore all the different organ systems in them that is the elementary organs of the elementary uh, system or the digestive system, organs of the urinary system and organs of the reproductive system all that come together and they meet and open into one chamber that is the cloaca. And they respire. These organisms have organs that help them to respire. They can respire by gills, lungs and through skin. Now they have gills as well as lungs because they have a dwell life, right? Wherein they spend life both in the water as well as on land. So when they are on land, they use their lungs for respiration. And when they are in the water, they use gills for respiration. And also frogs especially, they have small pores on their skin through which the exchange of gases can take place. And the heart is three chambered wherein it has two auricles and one ventricle. So it is three chambered. Next talking about the reproduction here they are dioecious wherein the sexes are separate and fertilization is external that is they lay the egg and then the sperm meets the egg outside the body of the organism in the water and then the egg hatches after fertilization. So therefore fertilization is external. They are usually egg laying therefore they are oviparous and development is indirect. Why? Because they have an intermediate stage. For example, this is tadpole. Frogs, they have an intermediate stage wherein they'll uh, form a tadpole which doesn't look like an adult and then the tadpole becomes an adult frog. So therefore the development is indirect here. And as I told you, they lay the eggs in the water and then the fertilization of the egg takes place. Therefore, the fertilization is external in this particular case. Next, talking about some of the examples, there is buffo, which is a larger frog, which is also called as toad. So this is buffo. Then we have rana, which is the common frog that we find everywhere during the rainy season. Rana and hyla, which is tree frog. This is hyla. And this is salamandra. So salamandra almost looks like a lizard only. But they have put it under class amphibia because they show most of the characteristics like amphibian. So that is the reason. That is they also live in water as well as on land. So that is one of the reason. Next there is one more that is ichthyophis. So ichthyophis is a limbless amphibian. All the other examples that if you can see here they have limbs. But this is the only amphibian that is there which is called as limbless amphibia because they do not have limbs. The, that is the fore limb nor the hind limb. So they are limbless. So it looks exactly like a snake or an earthworm but it is not that. So this is ichthyophis which is a limbless amphibian. So these are some of the examples. So let us move into learning about some of the MCQs. The organisms that live in water as well as land are called parasites. No, what are parasites? Parasites are those organisms which live on other living hosts and derive nutrition from those living hosts, right? So this answer is wrong. Saprophytes. Now saprophytes are those organisms which depend on the dead and decaying organic matter. So therefore this is also wrong. Amphibians. Amphibians are those organisms which are capable of living on land as well as water. Therefore, they have a dual life. So, amphibians is the right answer. So, is it mesophytes? No, it is not mesophytes. Mesophytes is the wrong answer. The right answer here is amphibians. Next question. In amphibians, they have dash that represents ear. Is it cloaca, operculum, trunk and tympanum? Cloaca is the opening that is it is a chamber into which all the other organs of the amphibians come and meet. So that chamber is called as cloaca. Operculum, no operculum is not the right answer because operculum is the covering that is present on the gill slit. It has nothing to do with the ear. Is it trunk? No trunk. The body of the frog is called as trunk or body of the amphibian is called as trunk. Is a tympanum? Yes, tympanum is the external opening that represents a ear in the amphibians.
Next, respiration in frogs is by gills, lungs, skin, all of the above. Yes, or they can ask respiration in amphibians is by. So, gills, yes, I told you because amphibians, they live in water as well as on land. So, when they are on wa in water, they need gills for respiration. When they are on land, they need lungs for respiration. And when they are on the land, especially frogs, they also use this moist skin which have pores for respiration. Therefore, all the above is the right option here. Next, the heart of amphibians have, see here I have not given how many chambers here. How In all the previous sessions, while asking a question about heart, I had asked the heart is of dash chambered. The heart is dash chambered. But now I changed it. So you must be able to understand that in the other sessions also where I have framed a question related to the chambers of the heart. This way the question can be framed as well in other topics also. So the heart of amphibians have one auricle, one ventricle, two auricles, one ventricle. One auricle, one ventricle is found in chondric thighs and ostic thighs because they have a two chambered heart. Okay, so option A is not correct. Two auricles, one ventricle. Yes, two auricles and one ventricle is correct because amphibians have a three chambered heart wherein they have two auricles and one ventricle. Now again, I have put a confusion here. One auricle, two ventricle. One auricle, two ventricle. One plus two again will be three. Always remember, either it will be one auricle, one ventricle, two auricles, one ventricle or two auricles, two ventricle. Never ever the ventricle will be more than that of the auricle. So just remember that. So therefore here this option is not correct because it should be two auricles, one ventricle. What I have given here, one auricle, two ventricle. So it is a tricky MCQ. So have that in mind. Next is two auricle, two ventricle. No, two auricle, two ventricle are usually found in the case of aves and in mammals because they have a four chambered heart. So therefore option D is also not correct. The right option is option B, two auricles, one ventricle. Next question, the common chamber in frogs to which elementary canal, urinary tract and reproductive tract open is called as operculum. No, operculum is the covering that is present on the gill slits which is seen in chondric, which is seen in ostic thighs. So therefore that is not the right option. Notochord, no notochords are of course present in vertebrates. That has nothing to do with the question. Next is cloaca. Cloaca is the right answer because that chamber is called as cloaca into which all these reproductive tract, the urinary tract and the digestive system or the elementary canal enters into. Nephridia, no. Nephridia are the kidneys that are present in the case of earthworm. They are the excretory units of earthworm or excretory units of phylum Annelida. So this is also not the right option. The right option is option C, cloaca. Which of the characteristic feature is seen in amphibians? What have I asked here? Which of the characteristic feature? I have not asked for which one of the following is not a characteristic feature. So here in this question, we are supposed to find out which is the characteristic feature of amphibians. They are cold-blooded. They are homeothermous. They have air bladder. They have scales. They are cold-blooded, yes. Or they, I can put it instead of cold-blooded, I can. Blooded, I can make the option as poikilothermous because poikilothermous is also called as cold blooded. Is it homeothermous? No, because homeothermous means warm blooded. They have air bladder? No, because you, these usually don't swim. They wade in the water with the help of their webbed feet. And uh, of course, they drown if they do not wade. But they don't have, that has nothing to do with the air bladder. Air bladder is found, they have air bladder is found in the case of ostic thighs. And they have scales, they do not have scales. It is the chondric thighs and the ostic thighs that have scales. These do not have scales. The right answer here is cold blooded or poikular thermos is the characteristic feature that is seen in amphibians. Next, rana is commonly called as toad. No, toad is commonly called, toad is buffo. Tree frog is Hyla, frog is Rana, Salamander is Salamandra. So this way also the questions can be asked like Buffo is commonly called as or Hyla is commonly called as. So 
salamandra that will not be asked because salamander it's easy so usually the question can be changed with this way you here rana is commonly called as it is the common frog that we see every day so option c is the right answer here so this was about the session wherein we learnt about the class amphibians and the sub phylum vertebrata and the phylum chordates so we also learned some of the mcqs which can be framed in exam point of view so this was about the session i hope you understood the session well we shall meet again in the coming session where we'll study one more class under sub phylum vertebrata and discuss the mcqs under it so meet you in the coming session thank you